Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jamie. I'm Justina. And this is Just Just So So You Know. Wow. (laughs) It's great to see you, darling. I know. I miss you. I see you every day on social media, but... And on the phone. I feel like we are constantly in touch, but I have separation anxiety, clearly. Normally, I try to hide out, camp out in my apartment. I don't really love to socialize in my building. I don't know a lot of my neighbors. I just kind of do my thing. And that's that. But this week, I was sitting, doing some work. I oftentimes like to be in my bathrobe because it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's... Or naked. Just being honest here. Yeah. And the the door buzzer rings. And so I'm like, oh, maybe I have a package or something. And she walks to the door naked and is like, hey. (laughs) (laughs) Is that my package? (laughs) That would be kind of the start to a porno. But that is not what happened. (laughs) What happened was I went out. I opened the door and I saw the person coming and they had a lot of packages. So I went to go help her and the door closes behind me and I was in my bathrobe and I didn't have my phone. I didn't have my keys. (laughs) I just felt my heart drop into my stomach and I was like, oh my God, I just locked myself out of my apartment. I have a meeting in five minutes. It was supposed to be a meeting. That's what she was more concerned about. She's like, I have a meeting. I have a meeting with Jane. She's like naked. She's like... (laughs) <laughs> my meeting <laughs> I have a meeting in five minutes so I'm like okay let me think quick on my feet I asked the Amazon worker I was like please can I use your phone I I'm ju- done that was the Amazon workers Instagram wait so I get on her Instagram and my first instinct is I need to get in touch with Justina to let Jane know that I'm not going to make the instead meeting instead of Jane she wanted, needed to get because, in touch with me I appreciate Jane, that Jane I love doesn't that. check her Instagram okay, so okay, I was like okay. this bitch will definitely yeah. Get, check this message and, and get in touch. I was like, you're pretty quick at answering. So yeah. I go on this Amazon workers Instagram page. <laughs> I look up Justina's profile and I go to message and it only lets me send one message. So I didn't know that it would only let me send one. So I you just were wrote, like, it's Jamie. Yeah, it's just, hi, it's Jamie. I just wrote, it's Jamie. <laughs> and then you responded. You go, <laughs> you go. Nice picture. Nice picture. That was your fucking response. And so I was like, Okay, I'm gonna. I commented on. It looked on your- like a fake Instagram account. <laughs> it was like three posts. No offense to the girl, she looked a little. Okay, crazy. Let me get. <laughs> let me cut to the chase here. So I go to Justina's profile and I go to her first picture and I said I, I wrote a comment. I said, "Woman, I am standing outside my apartment in a bathrobe, locked out. I need you to get in touch with Jane and let her know I can't make the meeting." <laughs> And I did. I was like, Jane, Jamie locked herself out. So she's naked. <laughs> she can't make it. She's like, oh, wow, typical. So now I'm like, okay, I'm in a crisis. I need to figure out how to get back into my apartment. Now that I've let the people know that I am kind of missing, at, at the very least, like <laughs> they know I'm alive. I'm missing. <laughs> so, so the only two phone numbers that I know are my mommy and my daddy. Oh, and my so, mommy, my daddy. So I was like, my mom, she's a flight attendant. I was like, I don't know where she is right now. I, I, I can't rely on that. So I call my dad and he's not picking up because he doesn't of recognize course. the number. Mm. So at this point, the Amazon <laughs> worker's like, can I have my phone back? Like, I uh, need She was to like, go. bitch, this is I'm your like, problem. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, you cannot have your phone back. I need to get in touch with oh them. Otherwise, God. I'm going to be locked out here for eternity. So I, the drama. I was like, all right, let me just think on my feet. I was like, let me send my dad a text. I was like, it is your daughter, Jamie. Please call me. I am in need of help. See, nowadays that could be a scam. I Unfortunately, know. like you're like, right. It's my daughter. Why wouldn't my daughter message me from her phone or from right. her own well, account? With this message, thank God. I mean, God you, bless you, his you heart. You gave the little, my, the signal code. My dad called me. I, we need to come up with some type of code yeah. word at this right. point so that he knows it's on a scam. But he called me. I said, Dad, please, I don't know what to do. Satya, my boyfriend, is the one that has the key. He's going to come over later, but I need him to come over now. Like, I'm locked out in a bathrobe, please. So he's like, okay, let me call Satya. Why didn't you go to Satya's Instagram and message him? Because he never checks his Instagram. Mm. So, And I also don't know his phone number by heart. So right. anyway, with... I, I was like, okay, the the, I, the the detriments of today's society. We don't know numbers. Is that's an issue? 
Yeah. Well, I was standing outside my apartment for and about you memorized it after 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, eight, four, five. Now four, I six, know it. Seven, nine, two. Yeah, I'm standing outside. I'm watching as my neighbors are entering. I'm kind of getting sick and tired of people seeing me stand there in my bathrobe outside my apartment. So I was like, <laughs> okay, what can I do? The now, landlord. here's where things get juicy, you guys. This is the part you'll appreciate. Whoa. So I decided to go down to the laundry room. Right. Naturally. Yeah. And I sit down on a chair there. I was like, let me just meditate for a little. I have time until Satya gets here. So as I'm about to close my eyes, I see a glue trap oh, out no. of the corner of my eye. And the next... Always goes back to the veganism, the animals. Always goes back to the animals. The next 25 minutes, I spent looking and searching for every glue trap and sabotaging the laundry room. Yes, she was like, glue trap hunter. Your room. <laughs> the glue trap the glue hunter. Trap hunter yeah. I'm going to get banned from my building if they hear this. But yeah, it's glue traps are awful. They're horrible. horrible. Prolonged deaths, long-term suffering. Oh my Ugh. God. I, the glue traps have traumatized me since I was a little kid because obviously I, growing up in New York, there are a lot of, rats mice whatever and my my dad used to have them and i used to get so upset because i would one time i remember hearing like screeching from a a rat and i was like dad get it out (sighs) and it's just so sad well long story short before we get back to the animals and the mice will kind of lead us into dissection and the topic of today's episode but i was sitting there and i think i lost track of time i kind of like fell asleep while i was just sitting there and what the my, only you jamie the, uh, my boyfriends had arrived and i guess he was your wondering, boyfriends <laughs> <laughs> She's like, my boyfriends the many of them have arrived he arrived and he didn't know where i was so there's only a few places i could be i guess yeah what the fuck why weren't you at the right place because i didn't want to stand outside my apartment anymore so i was like let me sit in the laundry room so <laughs> long story short he found me downstairs in the laundry room and he's like, babe, what are you doing here? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, you're here. You got here so quickly. And <laughs> the shit that this man puts up with, God bless him. Seriously. <laughs> yes, God bless him. Seriously. For sure. <laughs> he saved my ass. I ended up making the tail end of our call at, with Jane. And I was like, Jane, I'm so sorry. She's like, no. She's like, this is brilliant. She's put like, it in the movie. Put it in the movie we're writing. So we ended up writing it into the script. And so there was I'm a silver lining. Done. It was hilarious. But I need that to was, read it now. That was the, I guess, most epic moment of my week. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so. Crazy. You know how many times I've been locked out of my place? Naked? Barely. Like, basically. Really? Yeah. Um, oh, Lord. It's the worst feeling ever. But it's not as bad as the feeling of animals and that have that they have to deal with being cut open killed and cut open for so disturbing no purpose whatsoever other than to entertain some children entertaining entertain them so the first time that i came into contact with dissection was my seventh grade science class okay maybe it was seventh grade for me too i I went to the salk school of science Mm. and we had two science classes uh and my seventh grade teacher marcia hello marcia if you're listening i will be speaking with you about this soon oh shit because i remember she brought sheep's lungs I'm pretty sure it was lungs. Sheep lungs? To the classroom. And I'm done. I actually opted out. Good for you. It, the thought of it so deeply disturbed me that I did opt out. And I'm glad that she made it known that we had the choice to opt out. Mm. And now knowing what I know today, there are a, way, way better models that exist that I could have used instead. But right. the point is, is that it was a pretty traumatic experience. And it, it goes back to the fact that, like, from the very beginning, I had a, a compassion, right. a, a vegan heart for the animals it's without true. even knowing it. Right. I didn't know. I didn't realize that correlation either. No. But it's like. It's so sad that a a lot of kids may have had that intuition as well, Mm -hmm. but weren't as outspoken as we were Mm -hmm. and have always been and like just get brainwashed continuously to not feel. So my first fact is that frogs are not the only animals or sheep are not the only animals that are used for dissection. There's over 170 species of animals 
used for dissection. That's insane. I know I saw a little video of like baby pigs yep. and I was like, fuck that. Well, and also you see these horrible TikTok videos of kids in these science classes taking these fetal pigs or taking these bunnies or there's even like worms or other types of animals that they use and they like do these stupid dances with them or i they'll, know they'll hold the, the pig up and they'll be like bacon man and, and it's they're they're i think just punch them all I, just punch all those stupid kids <laughs> but i think Sorry. It's, it's their way of coping with it true because i think that people when they feel guilty it's like to get the onus off of them they almost have to laugh about it and make That's a joke true. about it and then it's like when you have the social circle of your friends around you and everybody else is doing it it normalizes it and makes right. it okay so this leads into my next fact which is not a single u.s medical school requires dissection or does dissection so then so why the fuck why are children in middle school and high school dissecting animals that's so weird it's like who are the psychos here you go and it's like a social exper experiment. Take a guess. Why do you think dissection is pushed heavily on schools? Money. Okay. Yes. I mean, that's just like the easy answer. But like money. Selling. Why? Because they're selling the p parts of the animals to the schools that pay for it. It's a whole industry in itself. But why would the... Well, it's also very costly. And later in the so episode, weird. we're going to talk about more cost efficient options. So. so weird. Okay. My last fact is that these animals do not die of natural causes like the dissection industry likes to claim. Mm. Most of them, the vast majority of them are taken from the wild and brought to places where they're killed by through very various different tactics gassing electrocution drowning yikes horrible for, deaths for uh, dissection yes and with some of the animals that they take from the wild they will use and breed and and online i was reading that like not only is this an animal cruelty issue, it also poses human health risks because when they kill them, they put them in toxic chemicals and formaldehyde. Yikes. But also, it's an environmental problem because when they take these animals from the wild, they're disrupting the ecosystem. Makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Mm. No. So let's kind of go into the history of dissection because I found this pretty interesting over the years how there has been pushback mm. from certain groups throughout history. But of course, there were people that did it and were right. able to do it. So back, back, back in the day, dissection, it becomes the leading method of teaching anatomy. Mm -hmm. That is how they discovered where certain parts were. And they used this in the school of Al Alexandria in Egypt. Okay. Fast forward, you're in the Middle Ages now, and the dissection of human cadavers mm. was considered, they were starting to use it because they wanted to figure out where the certain body, parts The human were. bodies. Right. Yeah. But in the Middle Ages, people were very against it. And partly, I think it, could, it had to do with the church. And right. people Sacred were against- and like- Well, they were against science and, mm. and advancement in science. So they, they the, the church banned- human cadavers being used in dissection you know what purposes. yeah uh, honestly like at this moment in my life i'm like that may have been a great idea to just ban science i mean you and i come from two very different perspectives on this because i personally think that it can be used for really good and we can yeah like but you look at advancements in in science now and today we're now sure. not we don't have to do dissection anymore because we have advancements in science but we're still doing it so it <laughs> that point is debunked because it's like yeah we have both options but that 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 whole thing has opened up a whole other box of bullshit. I think because people are been, uneducated. No, I it's think because people are like fucking driven by power. Well, teachers don't even know that there's alternatives out there. And so, guys, if you're listening, send this to all of your teachers, yeah. please. But teachers don't have much power either. We're going to talk about things that they can do with Samantha because I, I do think that there is a way that they can go to the principal and say, listen, I found this more cost effective program. And the principal's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up. Are you, who's watching your kids? Okay, well then they're going to have to <laughs> do, we'll be back, we'll be back and stage a full on protest. Yeah, Level that's 10 good. protest. Okay, so now in the 14th and 15th centuries, French and Italian scientists, they reintroduced the use of cadavers for dissection and anatomical exploration. 
So, I mean, listen, if the if the person died of natural causes, that's different. That's different and humans can consent to this where animals cannot. So Exactly. I've consented. Right, right. <laughs> there was a problem though where people were robbing graves. Yes. To sell the bodies for scientific okay. experience, yeah. experiments. And there's this one story of this poor young boy whose mother died and he was leaving the funeral. He was poor young boy. Driving away in the car. This is now fast forward into the 1900s mm-hmm. when cars existed. And he <laughs> sees his mother waving to him from another car. Meanwhile, she is dead. Whoa. And these two people had robbed her grave and took her out of there and went on to sell her body. And th- this event is what led to... I'm confused. More <laughs> laws. <laughs> Do you need me to re-explain the story? Are you guys following me? I don't know. You just said that the, this guy's mom died. He was leaving her funeral, and then he, and he saw, saw her, her waving to him from the Not car. her dead body, no, though. No, somebody was controlling her body to move and wave at her son, basically. Oh, so her literal body? Her body. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he, like, spiritually felt her. This is not funny. This her. is extremely disrespectful No, this to is the extremely, dead. like, insane. Whatever. This led to more laws prohibiting the robbing of tombs. But back to dissection. <laughs> the early 1900s. Unfortunately, frog dissection became more commonplace. Why frogs? I that is a really good question. Why frogs? What what if, what does that have anything to do with leading science or advancement? They were like, you know what? The frogs, <laughs> the, the frogs are gonna help us. Let's just kill them. Uh, hashtag leave the frogs alone. The f- Free the frogs. Mm-hmm. So what in 1988, it, it then began. It was like estimated around 75 to 80 percent of all biology classes. Uh, had frogs had, had animal dissection as part of their curriculum so that's like Insane. a brief brief history of this of course you can go look this up online and and do more of a deep dive but i think it just sets the picture of how we came to be where we're at with dissection today pointless uh, well we're gonna have our guest samantha crow yay come on to talk about some better alternatives and to share her experience being in the classroom working with these new models Mm. and also why it's more effective in various ways from cost to education Mm -hmm. and so let's get right into it you ready yeah you ladies seem to know quite a bit about animal dissection which is great we just trauma she looked into it i dove deep into my trauma you know (laughs) <laughs> however you get there as you always do yeah thank you for your vulnerability on the pod always so sam why don't you tell us who you are and what you do at PETA? so um as y'all mentioned i did um i was a, a former college biology professor uh for over a decade and now i've been with PETA for about 14 years Wow. So what what made you have that transition? Actually, students often sought out my section of anatomy and physiology or bio um, just because they, they I had a reputation for not dissecting animals. Mm. Um, but I think that really my motivation to do this as a career is because I um, having, you know, studied biology as an undergrad and then again as a graduate student, um, I dissected a lot of animals mm. um, in my experience. And I really, when I was so young, I didn't know that I had a voice. And so mm. I feel like that now my voice is a lot stronger and I really want to, you know, empower young students and, and also teachers to yeah. say no to this terrible and archaic practice. So why don't you tell us specifically what these new models are and why they might be more effective? Oh, yeah, I'd love to. So there are lots of models. So there's like virtual reality, augmented reality. They're actually hands on like dissectable um, frog models like a sin frog. There's also um, uh, paper like science structables kind of things. There's these really cool like merge cube that you hold in your hand and you can actually hold a beating heart and rotate it in 360 degrees. Whoa. So it's there's so many, so many cool ways to learn about animals and, and anatomy in general, you know, without harming them. What are some ways that teachers, if they wanted to implement these new models and this new technology into their classrooms, how do they go about doing that? 
Well, I'll say, so first of all, curriculum does not include dissection. It doesn't require it. Um, most states have now adopted the NGSS, which I won't bore you with the details of that, but there also are some states that have state science standards mm -hmm. that also do not require or even mention animal dissection. So oh. if a teacher wants to stop dissecting animals, I say, just do it. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Just start using the humane, you know, non-animal methods like, you know, Merge Cube or eMind or some other, you know, programs and just, just start right away. You know, you're still... Ultimately, the goal isn't like to teach a student how to physically use a scalpel, right? right. Like that's never been the, the goal point. of right. this lesson. What is the goal? What is the goal to even have that be part of the curriculum? Yeah, well, usually the goal as just like a, an activity in the classroom is an simply activity? to learn about anatomy. So, but because that is what it's for, you can do that in so many other ways, right? You can make clay models of animals or, you know, even just looking at videos of animals. Right. You can do drawings, you know, there, there could be a little so animation movie ways. or something mm -hmm. to be like, this is where my heart is and like a little frog a dance, dancing. Like a musical? Like, These are my legs and Oh, this I would is love some bone. interpretive dance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all know that. I mean, I know that song that's like, the, the, the leg bones connected to the foot bone the foot bones connected to the right bone you don't know that song i'm just gonna let the audience sit with that for a second it's a good one well i don't yeah. know all of it because i was like yeah bones talking about bones is uncomfortable for okay. me okay um <laughs> how close or far away would you say we are from banning dissection mm period. Is there any bills that might be in effect? I think that uh, the big picture is that we are closer than we've ever been before, mm. right? Animal dissection is falling out of favor because students really don't like to do it. Teachers are understanding that students have rights and you right. know, students shouldn't and cannot be forced in many states to dissect an animal. Right. Um, but yes, we do have a bill actually right now. It's a PETA-backed um, bill with uh, several other co-sponsors like PCRM and Social Compassion in legislation. And the bill is called um, the Class Act. So it's Compassionate Learning Advancements for Science Students. Mm -hmm. And that bill is actually going to be heard for the first time next week in Sacramento. Oh, wow. That's I exciting. Know, I'm so excited. That so is yeah, really basically exciting. the bill just sort of, instead of putting the responsibility of opting out onto the students who, you know, may feel uncomfortable speaking up or yeah. may not always be brave or may not have support from, you know, their guardians right. at home, these, it takes the responsibility away from the students and puts it on the teachers. Like yeah, teachers, right. if you are choosing to dissect animals in your classroom, then here's what you have to do, right? You have to tell them about the chemicals they're being exposed to. Yeah. You have to tell the students where these animals came from. Right. And then you have to, um, uh, you know, explain to them the environmental, you know, concerns with dissecting animals. Mm -hmm. So it's very exciting. That is really exciting because I know, I know it's, it sounded like I'm not for science. There's to a certain extent, I did love like chemistry. Like I loved mm. experiment. I loved experimenting. I was really good with science, but there you were, were certain that kid aspects. that put mentos and like Coke and watch it explode. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You I'm one of my, one of my freaking <laughs> projects was do eggs float, you know, dumb, dumb, dumb experience, but we don't I, use eggs anymore. No, no eggs. But I, I love the whole hands-on, let's actually see if this is working. And like, so I, I'm, I'm excited. I hope that bill gets passed because I, mm -hmm. I feel like the students will be able to learn more without harming and learning why that that's the better alternative. I think that part should be a part of the curriculum, mm -hmm. so why we're shifting that. As we're talking about, you know, raising awareness and, and also just making sure that students know that they have this option, yeah. what are some ways that PETA raises awareness about we have, this? We have done some demos. Um, it really just depends on like, you know, where the campaign is and what we're, you know, working on. So we've had a, um, there is a, a, a STEM curriculum company that's located in Indianapolis um, called Project Lead the Way. And we've had a campaign against them for um, several years now. And that, you know, has involved some some demos and protests along, along the way. But their curricula does include um, a couple of courses with animal dissection. It's a very minor part part of their curriculum, but we are, you know, still pushing them to, to fully embrace, you know, animal free methods. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so that's one example. And then one thing that we do a lot of is go out to science uh, education conferences where we mm -hmm. just talk to teachers, you know, sci you know, science teacher to science teacher, find out, you know, what they're using in the classroom, you know, if they have any concerns about animal dissection, which we hope they say yes. And then, you know, ha and ask us how we can help them. So then we do that through a pilot program. Um, Teach Kind Science donates like these, you know, the, the alternatives that we've mentioned, the non-animal methods, we donate those to schools and, and uh, to the teachers who want to replace mm. animal dissection. That's amazing. It's so it doesn't cost them anything. No, it doesn't even cost them anything. Wow. So crazy. And so, OK, let's say in a far away world, you have biomedical research companies that only use dead animals and then give them to schools like let's say these animals would end up in the landfill how would you respond to that what well, is there a humane way to do this you know i've i've heard that before and i think that you know and and even i've heard teachers make that argument that you know oh well they they would be thrown away anyway so why not let the students get you know get something out of these dead animals right Still well so i would argue justification let them isn't take it take the dead animals <laughs> They deserve like, oh, but you to should cut definitely into use them. them up. Yeah, what the heck? It, um, there's meant to be in the ground. Oh my god. Yeah, I've yeah, we've definitely heard that before, and I, I think that you know, I would my my response to that would would just be that y the students aren't learning anything. Right. Studies show that students who use non-animal methods outperform their peers who dissected animals in I most cases, and that is nothing you know to sneeze at. So no. I think that. You know, let them rest in peace. It's right. they, they shouldn't have been killed in the first place. Mm -hmm. But there's absolutely no reason to bring them into a classroom and, no. you know, tell students to, you know, here's a scalpel. Let's pin the legs back. You Ugh. know, and and let's right. figure out how they're similar to us. Well, but but is Johnny, you know, like being dissected in the classroom? No, he's not. Right. right. This is, you know, a frog or a fetal pig, and so they are not us. Yeah. And it's only teaching these kids that we can do this to animals and it perpetuates this stereotype that they are disposable, as you were saying earlier. Yeah. They're like, oh, actually, this was fun. I'm going to go grab a cat and do the same thing. This happened. You know? No, there was a guy, really? a 19 year old in Florida who dissected. Too grown for that. Bro. He dissected a cat in, in a school and then he developed this weird obsession with doing that and wow. he started kidnapping cats and dissecting <gasps> them. He became like the Florida's cat killer at 19. He was arrested. Wow. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Is there a time that you can remember some feedback that you got from a student after they did one of your models of dissection Ooh. or learning about anatomy? I'd be curious. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So when we actually launched the Synfrog, um, that actually did happen down in Florida. So see, we're sprinkling a little good in with the bad yeah. down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we did we did a you know press release and everything when Synfrog first came on the market several years back. At, um, and yeah, overwhelmingly, the students just couldn't believe how lifelike the, you know, the the uh, the synthetic frog was and how cool the organs were, how easy they are to identify. Um, you know, there's no smell, there's no mess, there's no chemicals involved. Mm -hmm. So yeah, overwhelmingly students prefer the non-animal methods. Right. So awesome. What are ways that people can get involved and help and spread awareness? If you're a parent, I would definitely, you know, check out parent or teacher. I would t check out teachkind.org. There's lots of information there, you know, for, you know, the adults, mm -hmm. um, for, you know, educators and especially science uh, educators. There's information about our pilot program also on teachkind.org. And then if you're a student, I highly recommend go to peta2.com to check out um, the student guides to, you know, ending animal dissection, getting it out of your school. There's yeah. lots of things you can do, you know, and I would highly encourage anyone being faced with an animal dissection, any students who may be listening, um, you know, speak up, say no, say, say you don't want to participate. And, and that's because this is wrong. And, you know, just explain that you have an ethical obligation or, or rather opposition to to dissecting an animal. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Sam, for coming on. Thank you. And for all that you do. Thank y'all so much for having me. I appreciate it. Great Hi. job. I am so glad that we did this episode today and thank you guys so much for listening, for following the podcast. Please rate us, like us, subscribe to us. Comment, share. Don't be afraid to share if you liked our 
our episode. I love seeing the, our comments. Yeah. Like we have some people who like really, really, really sweet. And we love you. We notice we you. We love you. We look all the time. Let us know if, there, if there's episodes or topics you want us to cover. Yes, because there's a lot of things we need to cover. And especially if it's something that's like super relevant in today's timeline, yeah. that'd be really cool. But share, share, share. And you know where to find me. I'm at It's Jamie's Corner. I'm at Justina.Justina. And go follow at PETA and check out PETA.org for more information. And you guys know the drill. Yeah, we'll be back. 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 We'll be